Hi everybody, my name is Julian Miller and I'd like to welcome you to another video. If you've been following this series, we just finished creating a class that represents a dog. And in this video, we're going to create a method for our class and talk a little bit about encapsulation. If you see here, what we have is a uh, just an empty main function that returns zero and we have our dog class that we created from the previous video. Now we're going to go ahead and implement a method that represents an action that most dogs generally perform, which is barking. So to do this, we declare a function prototype just like any other function. We give it a return type and a name. Fairly straightforward. And to implement this then, we go into our .cpp implementation file. and we start our implementation. One thing we can't forget to do is specify the scope of this function. Just like our constructor, we need to tell the system here and our compiler that this bark method or bark function isn't just some arbitrary function, it's a method that belongs to the dog class. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to just output some text and some of the members of our dog class. And you'll notice that we have included our IO stream here, so we have access to the C out and uh, the standard end line um, objects here. So what we can do now is go into our main function and we can create an instance of a dog. We'll name him Spike, give him an age of two and we can make our dog bark. And if we compile and run now, we'll see that our dog can in fact bark. Comes out with his name and his age. Another important thing to point out is that if we didn't have this scope identifier here, our method wouldn't know where to get these name and age values from. So it's important that you remember to place this scope identifier here. And that's fairly straightforward. So we can talk a little bit about encapsulation now. When you think about it, once a dog is instantiated, we shouldn't really be able to modify its age. For instance, if we were to type dog.age equals 1, our dog would be getting younger. We don't really want this to happen, I suppose, unless we're designing a game or something with a time-traveling dog. So by using encapsulation, we can hide the details of our implementation and avoid undesired changes. And that's essentially what encapsulation is. It is um, the hiding of implementation details and setting up access restrictions to prevent any illegal changes that shouldn't happen in our uh, in our objects design. So to do this we use access modifiers. And you probably noticed uh, this public keyword that I typed up here when we were first creating our dog's definition. And essentially what this says is that any of the following members or any of the members that come after this public keyword can be directly accessed using the dot operator outside of this class. So if we go over here we can see that we can in fact access the age using the dot operator. Same with bark. We can access the bark method using the dot operator. 
if we want to say prevent changes to the age, we can add a new keyword called private and we'll place the age, I'll just cut and paste it, underneath this private keyword. And what this does is it makes it illegal now to access this member from outside of our dog class. So you can see that inside of our dog class, because we're using this dog scope, we can still access the age just fine. But if we come outside of our dog class into our main function now, we can't access this. It gives us an error saying that it's inaccessible. And in fact, it won't even compile. So that's good. We cannot change our dog's age manually now. That's exactly what we wanted. We can't change the age, and we've protected our objects from unintended changes. But now our dog can't get any older. To get around this, we use an object-oriented pattern called a mutator or a modifier method. And we call it this because it mutates or changes the instance it's called on. And we can go ahead and make a age modifier or mutator method. Just like we declared our bark method, we're going to uh, declare another method or action our dog can perform, and we're going to call this one have birthday. And because it's a really simple and small method, I'm just going to go ahead and implement it here and not worry about creating it in our dog.cpp file. You can see it's very short. All we're doing is incrementing the age. So if we go here now, back to our main function, and we tell our dog to have a birthday, and we go ahead and run this, you can see that we have in fact changed the age to three years old through this have birthday method. So that is essentially what a modifier or mutator method is. It changes the instance in some way. Another type of method uh, is called an accessor or a get method. Right now, we can't do something like this. Uh, let's see here, I want to, uh, well, I'll put the dog's age, I suppose, since that's our only private member. So if we say dog's age, forgot the standard there. So we can't do this because our age is declared as private. But what if we wanted to just read this age and we didn't want to change it in any way? And like I mentioned, we use another object-oriented pattern called an accessor or a get method. And just like our other methods, we define it with uh, a return type, which is going to be an integer, and we're going to call it get age, and all it's going to do is return the dog's age. So you can see now that if we go back to our main function, we can call get age, and this will return the dog's age. So if we run it, it outputs the dog's age. And another uh, thing I should mention is that a really good habit to get into is to uh, always declare any of your accessor functions as constant. Basically what this does is it tells us that this function or method get age does not in any way change the instance of the object that you're calling it with. Uh, it keeps it constant, in fact. 
So this prevents us from making unintended changes. Say we accidentally typed plus plus here. The compiler will actually flag this and it'll tell us that we can't modify a value in a constant function. And that's about all I have to say about methods and encapsulation now. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to comment and, and ask them. Uh, thanks for watching.